to a video where we're going to be looking at YouTube. And in my space, being the sort of animals, dinosaurs, that sort of thing, there has always been a certain genre of videos that have performed well for views, but not really for engagement or any sort of longevity when it comes to content. And that is top 10 scariest, violent, uh, biggest creatures ever. When I first started, they were very obviously created with one goal in mind, and that was to make money. You basically just make a top 10 list of the biggest sea creatures, and you knew what, they were just a slideshow, and they had like, at the bottom, little Windows Movie Maker, number 10. Fast forward to today, where we have way more access to softwares that can basically facilitate any need or any clickbait you want. You want to make a really enticing thumbnail and cost you nothing? I don't know, AI art, that's somewhere you can go. I would say don't do that, it's incredibly obvious, but that's something I've seen popping up on my feed every now and again. For the past few years, YouTube has been flooded with AI art and just terrible chat GPT generated kind of thumbnails and things like that. However, there is one channel out there that I am still flabbergasted uh, makes videos, and that's one we're going to look at today, and that is a channel known as Final Affliction. <laughs> and if we just quickly look at the thumbnails for these, wow, are we talking about uh, tasteful content here. All of this is 100% photoshopped and in fact a lot of the stories never even existed. And we're going to take a look at one to just see how laughable these really are and how low effort they are in this modern era of just taking content from everything and making whatever you want. To me, making up a story is fine. But then there is a line that these sorts of things cross. The line's very blurred between, you know, documenting a terrible thing that happened, in this case, you know, animal attacks, for the sake of money. That's all this channel is. It is just like an AI-generated voice talking over an event that happened. In some cases, didn't even happen. But when it comes to content like this, there needs to be an air of self-awareness. Humanity, decorum, you know, you've got to be very careful when it comes to these things, because these are real people that either died, injured, maimed by an animal, and I don't know, doing stuff like this, yeah, kind of feels really disingenuous to me. I mean, we could just have a scroll through. You know, when it comes to YouTube, you have to be very careful when it's monetizing things. However, YouTube seems to be fine with all of these. I, I, some of these I just want to blur. In fact, maybe they are all blurred. I don't know, but they are horrendous. And this YouTube channel has been doing it for months. And every now and again, I'll see something pop up in my newsfeed, which just really irks me. With all that being said, there was one video that piqued my attention when it popped up in my sort of home feed, I think it was. And that's this one. This family gets eaten by a pack of sharks after crashing into the water. Such a circumstance I would have thought would have been well documented. Or at least, you know, for someone like me who sort of knows a lot about animals and dinosaurs and all this jazz, I would definitely know if something like that happened because how crazy is that? A car going off the cliff and then just so happens that there's a bunch of sharks at the bottom of it? Well, we have to check this out, right? <laughs> and if this is real, this is an absolutely terrible situation that ever unfolded on the most unlucky family you can ever imagine. So let's watch it. In this episode, a car crashes through a safety barrier and dangles precariously on a cliff ledge. One of the passengers plummets into the sea below, only to be devoured by a pack of 14 hungry sharks. <laughs> I didn't say, like, this is the thing, right? If it's real, me laughing at that is like, oh, what the hell, man? You'll see, just, just wait. Already, you can tell the amount of different footage this is pulling from, especially the car flying through the air. They crashed through a barrier and fell off a cliff. <laughs> like, what even? Moments later, the car tumbles down downwards. Will the remaining passengers meet the same ferocious end? Hit that like button and subscribe right now. You know, this is the thing. When you're talking about a horrible event like this, supposedly happening, because that's how you're presenting it, and then going, will they survive? Hit that like button and subscribe to find... <laughs> No, I don't need to do any of that. You're going to tell me whether they survive or not. Just even adding that in there, it just leaves such a bad taste in your mouth. Like, oh God, so tacky and horrible. Anyway, let's continue. This is one of the most terrifying and unique shark attack stories you'll ever hear. So there we go. They're presenting it that this is a real thing that happened. And like I said earlier, I've never heard of this. And I feel like that is just crazy that that even happened. So, you know, let's see how it happened. It was 1967 in Sydney, Australia. Okay, 1967, we have a date. Now remember this, we're gonna take notes, there will be a test. 1976, 
Sydney, Australia. There we go. Some friends were heading out for the day. Cool. We don't even have names, mate. Some friends were heading out for the day. Good God. They were a group of three adults and one child. This is what I mean when it comes to AI content. They were a group of three adults and one child. Who speaks like this? I see so many videos. I'm like, it's just, it's AI. And the thing is, YouTube should tell you if this is actual content or if it's just come from an AI farm. Because it's 100% has just been a chat GPT prompt that said, okay, family falls off cliffs, gets eaten by sharks tell the story. And then they just put the voice over and grabbed a whole bunch of clips. And they made this within a couple of hours. They climbed into the car, chatting happily as they made their way along Australia's coastline. I want receipts. How'd you know? On this particular day, however, the visibility was poor. Shows footage of lovely clear day. <laughs> this is what I mean, they just don't care. This sort of content needs roasting, needs, needs held accountable, God damn it. The autumn fog had rolled in off the sea enveloping the coast and the city in a blanket of white. 100% this is what they think the autumn fog looks like. Put some autumn fog on it. There you go. That, that's better. As the car motored along. As the car motored along. Who wrote this? I know who wrote this. It wasn't who, it was it wrote it. The child in the back seat began acting up. He had dropped something on the floor and couldn't reach it. In an attempt to calm the child down, the driver tried to reach into the footwell behind him and find the toy. Hold on, hold on. So we have a car filled with three people, right? So there's one driver. I'm assuming the other person is in the passenger seat and there may be another adult, as they said, in the back. Why on earth did the driver turn around to try and get the child's toy car or something? out of the footwell when there was a perfectly capable adult able to help. You just have to love it. <laughs> you just have to love the script. He took his eyes off the road for a second. They just use all this content. All like you, I saw BBC pop up there for a second. TikTok is anything, anything they can use to just every sentence, uh, find a video specific for that. Someone in the footwell, someone dropping their phone. <laughs> Good God, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It was a second that proved fatal. Oh no. He misjudged his speed at the oncoming- He, de he definitely looks like he's misjudging his speed. He slammed on his brakes, but it was too late. The car crashed through the safety barrier. Oh, off a bridge? The passengers screamed as the car flew through the air for a few seconds before <laughs> tumbling. The thing is, I will we'll go in the comment section just see what people say, but I bet 100% people are believing this. It became caught on some rocks sticking out from the cliff edge. The rocks held the car in a terrifying vertical position. That's not vertical, that's horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly diagonal, we could call that. The front passenger hurtled forwards. She smashed through the windscreen and fell to the water 100 feet below. Oh, at least she was wearing a bikini. <laughs> so she, she smashes through the window. Everyone else is fine. I'm assuming we would have had, you know, you would have said something like they were wearing a, they weren't wearing a seatbelt, right? Something like that. How did that even happen? Only seconds later did she hit the cold, hard surface of the ocean. Right. She lay still lifeless on top of the water. Oh, well, that's kind of terrifying, but she looks fine. There were shadowy shapes making a beeline for the woman in the water. Oh no. Drawn by the scent of blood. There was a frenzied attack on the woman's body. Eyewitnesses reported seeing 14 sharks thrashing around in the water. I mean, we are, we're a hundred percent saying that this is real, right? They're saying there were eyewitnesses, 14 sharks were there uh, attacking a horrendous. This should have been everywhere on the news, I'd imagine. Even one shark attack reaches, makes headline news. The car hung precariously on the cliff above. If the passenger hadn't died on impact, she was torn to shreds in seconds by the sharks below. Like they're a pack of piranhas tearing meat off a chicken bone. <laughs> the driver could see the commotion in the water. He could see the ocean bubble and boil, turning red as the woman disappeared from sight. The seatbelt bit into his chest. <laughs> Look, we've got this guy again. Oh, he's just lost his frappuccino and his coke. This day couldn't possibly get worse for this guy. Now his seatbelt's jammed. Oh, God. It was holding him firm. He heard the car creak and groan under the strain. 
Every time he made the slightest movement, the car rocked and swayed. It was hanging on by inches. No, 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 no. The, the term is it was hanging on by a thread, AI, not by inches. You almost had it very close though, very close. A for effort. When the driver glanced over his shoulder, he could see the child and the other passenger were not moving. He tried to reach them, desperately trying to wake them but they didn't respond. If he somehow managed to climb out of the car, he was still stuck on a sheer cliff a hundred feet above the sea. People rushed to the cliff top. I mean, they don't look like they're rushing. They look like they're just on a stroll. I feel like I need to comment on every bit of footage that's used because it has been specifically picked out for these sentences. But why? Why are you even using things that don't even look like the things you're saying? God damn it! The man had hit his head badly on the steering wheel. <laughs> the man had hit his head badly. Wow, really struggled to get over that sentence. <laughs> his vision was blurry and his head was oozing blood. Oh he no. He could feel it throbbing. The pounding of his heart sounded in his ears. I mean, we're, we're just trying to stretch this out for as long as possible to get over the eight minute mark, aren't we, for mid rolls? That's 100% what you guys are doing. But after 30 minutes, clinging onto the edge of the cliff, the rocks finally gave way. He was there for 30 minutes. And then finally the rocks gave way. Didn't do, any, didn't do anything specific to make the car fall in the water, but just... They fell after 30 minutes. I assume the rocks just lost their grip on the mountainside. Car crashed downwards, somersaulting down the cliff. It smashed into the water below and bobbed there for a few minutes. Few minutes? Few, few, excuse me. How long does it take a car to, that's been in an accident, mind you? It's not even like sealed at this point. I'm assuming there's damaged doors. Water's going to be able to get in easy. It bobbed there for a few minutes. A few seconds? Maybe a minute tops? <laughs> Good God. The man felt the rush of water entering the right. vehicle. He desperately pulled at his seatbelt, but it wouldn't. Oh, but well, he's gonna die then, I As assume. As the water kept rising, he panicked more and more. He felt it creep up over his feet. Oh, Discovery Channel, that's nice. <laughs> Mythbusters. <laughs> oh, the irony of using like clips from Mythbusters in this real situation. Good God. Then something swept past his side. <laughs> just it was a Greenland the shark. Good a dark God. gray fin sliced through the water. The sharks had gotten a taste for human flesh and they were hungry for more. Even though pretty much all sharks do not like human blood, there's a certain scent or chemical that's in fish blood that they really like, but human blood I don't think has the same effect. I could be wrong. I'm not a known like biologist at this, but uh, I think the only ones that may act that way are bull sharks just because they're so high on their own t testosterone. Either way, we'll presume these are 14 adult crazy the bull sharks that have hit the gym one too many times man tugged at the seat belt will it give eventually he was able to ease the tension and unclip it oh well that's lucky finally he eased the tension don't know how but after 30 minutes of you know trying it and it being in the water it just gave the car was now half submerged there was no way out, except to dive under the water and swim out through the half-smashed windscreen. Okay, so now we're seeing that the car's upside down and it was half filled. So he would have drowned then, because he would have been upside down, he can't undo his seatbelt, half filled, well that's his head then. I thought he was in waist deep water. Why is it upside down? Why are we- what's going on? He <laughs> knew the second he exited the car, he would likely be devoured. He heard thrashing and splashing around. I love that he's not even paying attention to the, the passenger, like the, the child in the back seat the, the, or, or the other person who's also in the back seat. He looked at them when they were on the cliff, was like, they're dead. I've just got to do me now, I think. The sharks were trying to get through the smashed back windows. They were trying to get to the two passengers in the oh, back Oh, there seats. we- oh, we're now calling sharks calculated killers that no, there are people in the back seats. They're not going for the driver, they're going for the people in the back seats. <laughs> oh my god. He took one deep breath near the roof of the car and dived underwater. But water. I thought the car was upside down. How? That would... Huh. Oh. 
Oh. The blurry, shadowy figures of the sharks came into view as they swam past the open windscreen. He watched as they swam from left to right and back again, circling the vehicle, looking for a way in. Like they know what a car is. Hold on, the, wind, the windscreen's out, let's go through there, boys. When he could see no sharks in front of him, he chose this moment to go for it. Wait, 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 so hold on. He, he, he dived in the windscreen, so he's like on the bonnet of the car, and he's waiting. Bear in mind, salt water. How much can you really see? He's waiting for the figures to go, and then just like a video game, after waiting for the right moment, there's no sharks, and he's gotta go. When he surfaced... <laughs> oh, there he is! Ah, oh, it was a VW. Oh, finally, at least we got some context. He scrambled onto the roof of the car. It was barely above water now. <laughs> he looks completely fine. <laughs> it was wet and slippery, but he clung on, hauling well himself done. onto the steel top. Where are all these videos coming from, man? Blood dripped into his eyes. He wiped it away and looked at the shore. It was tantalizingly close. Oh... I love how the AI just somehow can't say so. tantalizingly close. <laughs> All around him, dorsal fins broke through the surface of the water. They were having a feeding frenzy. They had found their way into the car now. Oh, they'd found their keys. No, I bet they'd open the doors. And had made their way into the back seats. As the car gurgled and rocked, and the tail fins of the sharks thrashed and splashed, the man knew he had to make a break for it. <laughs> if this is a real thing that happened, which I'm pretty sure it's not, the way this is presented is lazy and horrendous. How the narrator is saying the things as well, so they don't care that they were people, they're just things they're getting. But like a horror movie, like we're, we're, we're dealing with fiction, it's more a case like, oh yeah, they died, but they didn't really because they're not real people. Summoning all the courage he could muster, he dived from the roof of the car towards the shoreline. <laughs> like how they synced that up perfectly. The guy who's gonna jump five feet from a slightly sinking VW, as opposed to this guy who's you know, surrounded by 14 sharks. They're eating his friends and everything. He's got a the bloody forehead that's dripping into his eyes. God knows whatever. And he's got to make it to the shoreline, which we don't even know. Are we talking a beach, a cliff? He just fell off a cliff. Like, there's no shoreline, right? That would just be a, a straight cliff, I would have thought. Like, th there's no saving this guy at this point. It was only feet away. But if it's only a few feet away, we're talking like a distance like that at this point. Like, what? Oh no, the sharks are gonna, like, get him as he leaps over the tiny gap. He hurtled uh. through the water, kicking his legs, friends, <laughs> inching closer and closer to the- Wow, this guy's going so slow, inching closer. <laughs> How are you? I am under the water. The sharks will hear me if I swim loud. He was sure he would suddenly feel a sharp bite as one of the sharks grabbed him and shook him around briefly. I mean, he should be, right? At this point? Like, everyone who's touched the water has been instantly mauled by a shark. And actually, I'm kind of curious about the footage, like this footage here, of a big shark legit going for a guy, or at least if it is, it's a clever ad. I want to know the story behind this one, not this made-up fairy tale. Is that real? That look real? <laughs> but miraculously, he made it to shore. He grabbed hold of the rocks and scrambled onto dry land. When he made it, he looked around just in time to see the car oh. sink. The swirling and the bubbling of the water was all that was left as it swallowed the car. The thrashing and splashing of the sharks continued for some time as they followed the car mm -hmm. downwards. When emergency services reached the man, he was taken to hospital. He had a serious head and neck injury and was also treated for shock. But luckily, he went on to make a full recovery. Treated for shock? He should be- he should have PTSD! He just saw his friends get eaten in front of him, fall off a cliff. Oh no, but it was all okay. It was all fine. He lost his friends that day in a tragic and terrifying event that would haunt him for the rest of his days. I thought you said he was fine. Like, it was his fault that, like, they all died. He's the one that took his eyes off the road, apparently, to fetch something the child who had a whole life in front of it. 
He, she, God knows, we don't even know. There had been a lot of reported shark attacks in Sydney Harbor and its surrounding beaches over the decades. The exact species of shark involved was never identified. Because it wasn't real! <laughs> That's why! Though marine biologists theorize that this might be the work of the bull of shark, since they occasionally hunt in groups called school. <laughs> oh, we're learning, guys. And there we go. Already we have one. After surviving a shark attack, this man was mauled by a lion pride. <laughs> Oh, the works of fiction. But the thing is, I looked at some of the videos and they look to be based on real things. So the, some of the videos are completely fictional and other ones are based on real people that died. But just so, you know, for my own sanity, we're going to look up 1976 or whatever it was, Australia, Sydney, shark attack, you know, we're going to see if we can find anything because this would be documented 100%. So we have right away the story of shark attacks in Australian waters. So that's just generally everything. Publication 1976, right? We have, oh, oh, the 26th of August 1976, shark provided her most exciting day. That sounds like a good thing. Not my family and friends were ripped apart by a shark. It was the most exciting day of my life, although I was very frightened at the time. Jude Aldred said after a white pointer had attacked the cutter, arraying her and David White. Okay, uh, that is definitely not it. We've got a list of all of the fatal shark attacks in Sydney. So all we need to do here is go on 1976. There is no documented fatal shark attacks between 1966 and and 1982. I think that's pretty concrete. This is 100% made up. And here we go. So a family on vacation crashed their car into the ocean after accidentally driving off a cliff by Dover Heights, Sydney, Australia. A pack of sharks eats them as they try to escape their sinking car. We have a family now on vacation, not friends, a family. Uh, this video contains graphic de de descriptions of animal attacks and may include dramatic reenactments of the attack. That sounds like something that was just copy and pasted from a legit program. And disclaimer, the pictures audio and video used in the videos on this channel are a mix of paid stock by attribution of royalty free public domain and other copyright free sources. Don't know if the BBC is copyright free sources or Discovery Channel. No copyright infringement is intended, but definitely has happened. If you are or represent the copyright owner of materials used in this video and have an issue with the used material, please send an email to Cartoons react business at gmail.com. I will respond immediately. This isn't like final affliction is not even the channel's name. Cartoons react is the channel or at least the umbrella of this. But what I'm more interested in is what the comments have to say. This is probably the most terrifying scenario ever. And they even liked their own comment. <laughs> Oh god, things are happening in this world. <laughs> oh, they're definitely happening in this world, but mainly inside this guy's imagination. <laughs> he should be in jail for killing so many people. That the shark or the guy? Here we go. We've got someone who's caught on. These lazy, low-effort AI videos are trash. A real pain to listen to, just for a few bits of information embedded in endless fluff. Well, unfortunately, um, it's not even bits of information. It is completely fabricated. There is no such instance of this shark attack that ever happening. In fact, I'm gonna call this video the most brutal shark attack that never happened. In short, the driver killed all passengers, saw the title and had to confirm that this actually happened. WTF? If you just watched the video, despite the terrible footage, you would think that this was something that, would, that happened because it's presented as such and even has eyewitnesses. There is nothing, absolutely no evidence, not even the video itself cites any sort of information. Now, back in the day when I did animations, I even made a video on this topic because it was so infuriating to me that people were just able to make this sort of thing and everyone would believe it. I think it was like the biggest great white shark has ever been discovered and it really annoyed me. <laughs> I mean, this will always be a thing, but now that you've got AI helping people write scripts, do thumbnails, all this jazz, these channels are popping up left, right, and center and YouTube is just happy to let them proliferate. It doesn't even matter if they put gore in the titles or the thumbnails. This channel, or at least it seems to be, has been doing this for months and has been getting away with it. If anything, there needs to be some sort of way for viewers to know if that content that they're looking at is AI generated. Because a lot of these people are learning or at least 
are going away from this video thinking that a family or friends, whichever one they decide to read the description or listen to the video, died in a horrendous way in Australia. But they definitely did not. Thank you, Matthew Frost, who is desperately trying to spread the good word that none of these existed by replying to two guys who will, in all honesty, never read his reply. But I, I appreciate him doing the good fight there, at least trying to get the information out there. But this did definitely never happened. Anyway, guys, I just want to make this video. They've existed since I started YouTube, and it seems like they always will. It's always going to be a thing that will get views, but it's just something that seems incredibly distasteful. And I was expecting, even in the description, to find some sort of hint that, you know, this is fake, because at least then they can plead ignorance that you didn't read the description, but they're not even doing that, or at least with this channel anyway. Anyway, guys, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I'll, uh, I'll see you guys in another video. Bye!